to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto the death. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. We welcome you today to our study of the book of Revelation. In this lesson, we're continuing our idea of seven keys to unlock the book of Revelation. And so we hope you'll grab your Bible, have it handy, as we're going to look to the Word of God to help us understand better this book. This book has confused a lot of people. People are either so scared of it, they never read it, or there are some people who read it and come up with a lot of ideas that we just don't find in Scripture. How does a Christian who believes the Bible is the Word of God, how do I understand better the book of Revelation as God intended it? That's what we're going to discuss from the Scripture today. And so we hope you'll find your Bible if you don't have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study. As always, my friend, we're so glad that you've joined us for our Bible study today. Uh, we want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, our aim is simply to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We are simply a work, an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ, and today's lessons are being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Church of Christ. We want to encourage you to check out the Church of Christ. If you'd like to know more about the Lord's Church in your area, you'd like to learn more about the Church of Christ, you can go to our website we have a church locator there as well that can put you in contact with a local congregation most likely or you could contact us and we'd be glad to help you with that as well. Visit the church in your area and we'll be glad to help you in that as also. Friend, as we think about our study and our growth and our desire to know more about God's Word, we also want to encourage you in your journey to know God's Word better to check out our website thegospelofchrist.com. From our website, all our materials, videos, audios, transcripts, it's all available online and available all the time for free download. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson on the book of Revelation or any of our lessons, you can go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'll be glad to send it to you as a DVD or a CD or maybe even better, you can get a digital download and receive that instantaneously nearly as well. And so if we can help you in any way of your study, in your study of the Word of God, please contact us and let us know. We'd be happy to do that. Friend, as we think about the book of Revelation, as we said, Revelation scares a lot of people because its language is rather unique. Unlike the other 26 books in the New Testament, which are meant to be taken literally, Revelation is more of an apocalyptic book. And so, by way of reminder, the first three keys that we set forth, Revelation is written in signs and symbols. Revelation 1 verse 1, the Bible says, these things God gave to His servant John to show him things which must shortly take place, and he sent and signified it. That word signified means to show in signs or symbols. The book of Revelation, its images are meant to impress an idea, not to be picked apart literally, but to impress an idea upon our hearts and minds, and many times that idea would direct them back to an Old Testament principle they would understand. Second key, to understanding the book of Revelation is it was written in a short, the things that were written were going to happen in a short time frame. These things will shortly take place. Revelation 1 verse 1. Uh, Revelation 1 verse 3. The time is near. Revelation 22 6. Again, the idea of shortly take place. The book of Revelation was written to Christians in Asia Minor to offer them help and them hope as they dealt with persecution in the first century. However I look at the book of Revelation, I've got to read it with first century glasses on. How did this help 
the family in Asia Minor who does not know whether the next knock on the door might be the Roman militia dragging them out, some of them putting in prison, maybe even some of them dying. How does Revelation deal with that scenario? That's the time frame Revelation is addressed to. Whatever I learn from Revelation, I learn by application and implication as we think about that. And then, of course, the third key to unlock the book of Revelation, Revelation is written to comfort, to give first century Christians who are persecuted comfort. It's written to give comfort to first century Christians in their persecution. We heard about it. Revelation 6 verse 9, we mentioned in our last lesson, you've got this, this vivid, vivid scene. You've got souls who've been offered under the altar. These are martyrs for the cause of Christ. And, and, and they're in essence crying out, How long, O Lord, faithful and true, until you avenge our blood? We died all for the cause of Christ. Aren't you going to avenge that? And God in essence says, Hold on just a little while longer. They're given robes of white. They're given an elevated place. God says, I'm going to take care of that, and here's where you are with me right now. And comfort and help is offered to Christians throughout the book of Revelation. And so that kind of sets the stage up to where we are right now. Fourth key that we want to mention today is this. Revelation identifies the dragon and the two beasts. You know, anytime we've got something that we don't understand, if I can understand who some of the main figures are in that, I can get a better image of what's going on. Well, in the book of Revelation, you've got some pretty wild images. You've got the dragon, you've got this sea beast and this land beast. Who are those people? That'll help us to understand what's going on in the book of Revelation. Friend, Revelation identifies who the dragon is. The dragon is identified clearly as Satan and as the devil. Listen to Revelation 12 verse 9. The Bible says, So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation chapter 12 verse number 9. Then chapter 20 verse 2 also identifies the dragon. He, God, Christ laid hold the dragon, that serpent of old who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. And so when you study the book of Revelation, let's realize you, you've got this graphic image. You've got this, this spiritual battle. You've got the woman, that woman is pregnant with child, and, and here's this dragon who's waiting to thwart God's plan. And when you see that dragon, are we talking about some political figure today? Are we talking about some that war in heaven? Are we talking about some war that's happening now? Is it some great spiritual apocalypse? My well, friend, the Bible tells us the dragon is the devil, the one who's been wreaking havoc and trying to thwart God's plan all along. Also, when we think about the dragon, we need to understand who the sea beast and this land beast are. The, the, the sea beast, which, has, which is a very graphic image pictured in the book of Revelation. What do we know about it? Chapter 13 tells us what this sea beast is. Let's give some details of it. Chapter 13, verses 2 and 4, the sea beast is given its power by the dragon or Satan. Remember, talking about in the time frame of the first century Christians, that's what the book of Revelation is written specifically to, there was another beast who rose up out of the sea, and his power was given by the dragon that we know of as Satan. Chapter 13, verses 2 and 4. We know that people worshiped this beast, the one that's given its power by Satan. People in the first century, according to chapter 13, verse 4, were also worshiping this beast. The only people who did not worship the beast are those who are written in the Lamb's book of life, that is Christians, chapter 13, verse 8. And so when you, when you see this image in the first century, everybody except Christians 
are worshiping this image that's been made. Revelation chapter 17 verses 9 through 12 identifies that the, the sea beast that has seven heads, a friend, Revelation 17, 9 through 12 identifies the seven heads as seven hills and seven kings. What would Christians naturally have thought of when, when the book of Revelation identifies this sea beast and the seven heads as seven hills and seven kings? What would Christians in the first century naturally have thought of? Well, they would have thought of Rome, seven-hilled city. They would have thought of her rulers, the seven Caesars up to this point. And so when we think about this idea, Christians, when they heard this, that, that this force that is satan satanic, as it were, in, in its motive and everything that's doing to the church, Christians naturally, when they heard of that, would have identified this as Rome. This is her leaders. They're the ones who are doing this. And there's a lot of other evidence from that time frame that will go along that they were forcing people to worship Caesar and things like that. But Revelation 13, 7, it's identified that this beast is identified as a persecutor of the saints and as a dominant world power. Friend, that can only be Rome and her rulers. And so here's what we've got up to this point. The dragon is Satan. Working under the dragon is the sea beast. That would be Rome, her Caesars, her rulers. They were not people of God. They were not following God's uh, plan. And Satan was using them to persecute Christians. And as a result, Christians are suffering over that. Now, what about this, this, as you think about this sea beast, this first beast or sea beast uh, is none other but Rome and her rulers. But what about this second beast? A beast now, unlike, different from the sea beast, arises out of the land. We refer to it as the land beast, and it's a graphic image as well. well what do we know about this land beast? According to chapter 13, Verse number 12, he exercises the authority of the first beast. And so if the first beast is Rome and her rulers, whatever this land beast is, this other graphic image is also working under the power and the authority of Rome and her government. According to chapter 13, verse 12, this beast makes people worship the first beast makes people think the first beast is a god or a deity in some ways. According to Revelation 13, verses 13 and 14, yeah, he gets people to make an image to the first beast, chapter 13, verse 15, and he is identified by, he identifies those who worship the beast by a, a mark on their hand or on their forehead. Chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. In fact, he is identified as a false prophet. Okay, from that time frame, who is it that was enforcing the worship of? Who is it that was marking people so they could be known as following the Caesars and the Roman government? Who is it that's making images of the beast and work, getting people to? Well, oh, friend, this would be the Roman militia. The Roman government that was enforcing emperor worship, that was marking people, identifying them as paying homage to Caesar and the Roman government. He's that false prophet who's trying to make these Caesars into gods, as it were, and Roman government as, as the deity of the world, as it were. And so the dragon, Satan. First beast is Rome and her rulers. The second beast is the Roman militia or government that is go going around and for enforcing worship. And friend, if I can understand that, that helps a whole lot in understanding the plot of the book of Revelation. And it goes right with that time frame when Christians were suffering greatly at the hand of these Christians. And so this image of the dragon this image of the, the sea beast, this image of the land beast, marking them on their head, causing people to fall down and worship Rome and her rulers. No doubt Christians immediately would have known what that reference, and as you follow the plot, they're going to see the destruction of these beasts and God being victorious over them. And so consider the cast with me for just a moment. Revelation is a divine conflict or a divine drama per se. God, Christ, and Christians are on the winning side. The opposing force, 
Satan, Rome, Rome Caesars, and those who are enforcing emperor worship. They're opposed to God, and, and it's as though they're at war, and Christians are caught in the middle of that. And, and, and here's the message, which is the overriding, powerful, encouraging message of Revelation. God, Christ, and Christians will be victorious, will be triumphant. You know, you see, that, you see the dragon, chapter 12. Chapter 13, you see the sea beast and the land beast. And as you read through that book, then victoriously, Christ comes out on a white horse, enthroned, powerful, sword coming out of his mouth. He's reaping destruction on these enemies of God and enemies of Christianity. What's that image all about? Friend, again, not, not necessarily to be picked apart literally, but God and Christians are going to be victorious in the end. And friend, isn't that a message that so practically bleeds through the book of Revelation as well? Do Christians today sometimes suffer at the hand of evil, ungodly governments? You bet they do. Does God know and does God care that they're suffering? Absolutely. Will God one day right all those wrongs? And will Christians today be given a place of honor next to God and His people? Over and over again, the Bible teaches all of those ideas, and Revelation just encourages us. No matter what we face, no matter what difficulty arises, stay true to God. Be faithful until death. I'll give you the crown of life. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10. All right, the fifth key. And so the first four we have identified. Number five is this. Revelation also identifies the harlot and Babylon. These are also two key figures that go right along with the dragon, the sea beast, and the land beast. Who is this harlot? Well, oh, friend, the harlot is none other than the city of Rome. Notice these great facts about the harlot. Chapter 17, verse 18 says, she is a great city. Chapter 17, verse 2, she commits fornication with the kings of the earth. Chapter 17, verse 3 and verse 7, she's actually riding on the back of the beast. She's dressed and lives luxuriously. Rome was like that in the first century. 17, verse 4, she is drunk with the blood of Christians. Chapter 17, verse 6. Friend, when you think about this, the city that fits this, the city that was a great city, all the world was coming to it for luxury, for transport, for commerce, the one that was killing Christians. Friend, that, that's none other than the Roman government. The city that fits that description is Rome itself. What about Babylon? Babylon the Great is mentioned in Revelation 18. And, and again, I want you to think about this, okay? To a person who is familiar with the Bible, maybe come out of Old Testament Judaism and has now become a Christian, when they hear the word Babylon, what are they naturally going to think of? They're going to think of Nebuchadnezzar. They're going to think about the Babylonians who actually took God's people captive during the period of Israel and, and took them away to, from their homeland to their far land, uh, to a far land and, and, and reaped havoc on them. And so Babylon is an image they would naturally think of. Well, who is this Babylon the Great? Chapter 18, verses 16 and 21 also says Babylon's the great city. Babylon also, according to chapter 18, verses 3 and 9, commits fornication with the kings. Babylon lived and dressed luxuriously. Chapter 18, verse 6, Babylon is guilty of killing Christians. Chapter 18, verse 24, and Babylon is used synonymously for the, the city. Rome, uh, chapter 17, verse 5, and thus Babylon would be a synonym for Rome. And so you've got that, that, that great city, you've got Rome, you've got Babylon mentioned there. God's going to reap havoc, wreak havoc on them for their ungodliness. And so not only is the dragon, the sea beast, and the land beast identified, the harlot and Babylon the great is also identified. And friend, understanding that again helps us to see who did this relate to? How did this help first century Christians? And by application, how does that apply to us today? All right, the sixth key in understanding the book of Revelation is to identify a specific time period. You've got a time period mentioned of 1260 days, 42 months, or three and a half years. Sometimes you'll hear it like time 
times and half a time, three and a half years, 1260 days, 42 months. Well, all of those, the 1260 days, 42 months, three and a half years, they're all talking about that same time frame. They all represent the same thing. They're all mentioned in different places in Revelation. Chapter 11 mentions it in verses 2 and 3. It's mentioned multiple times in chapter 12, in verse 6 and verse 14, mentioned in Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. And friend, all three of these time frames are referring to a time, uh, an indefinite, period of time of intense persecution, soon if not already coming upon these Christians, and that is such a big key to understand this. When you hear about that, 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 that time period, remember we're not talking about some millennial age to come. However the book of Revelation is interpreted, it has to first and mainly apply to first century Christians in Asia Minor. God tells them, this time period, 1260 days, 42 months, time, times, and half a time, it represents a period, uh, an incomplete, indefinite period of intense persecution. This persecution came on Christians at the hand of the Roman government and her militia. It was relatively, not, it wouldn't have been if you were living in the first century and thought this way, but relatively, it was a short in duration, and it is for this period, of intense persecution the book of Revelation addresses. Again, think about that family in the city of Thyatira. Think about that mother who's sitting around the table with her children. Father's already been carried off to jail by the Roman government. He wouldn't bow down to that image. That mother and those children are sitting there. They don't know what's going to happen next. They know they love the Lord. They know that they believe God's teaching is true and they want to go to heaven no matter what. God sends the book of Revelation to these Christians to tell them, yes, there's going to be a period of intense persecution, but if you remain faithful unto death, all rights will be wrong, all wrongs will be righted, and you will be victorious in the end. All right, then let's talk about the seventh key to understand the book of Revelation. Revelation discusses a spiritual, not a physical kingdom. Friend, this is big to understanding a lot of the problems that arise uh, from false doctrines in Revelation. A lot of people think God's talking about the physical kingdom of Israel. Friend, that's not what's being discussed. God's not talking about some premillennial age where He's going to restore the kingdom of Israel and someone's going to be sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. That, that's not what's being discussed. Revelation discusses a spiritual kingdom, not a physical kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight. That's the kingdom Revelation deals with. The kingdom of Christ, although while we are in the world, we're not of the world. John chapter 18, verse number 36. And so in Revelation, this kingdom that's being spoken of is present. Revelation 1 verse 6, notice, notice what God says about this kingdom. Let me direct your attention to a few passages. Look in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 6, addressing the book to Jesus and of Him who's made us a kingdom of priests to His God and Father, to Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. As the English Standard Version, New American Standard, other translations will translate that, we are a kingdom of of priests. Well, what does that imply to us? We're in the kingdom right now. This kingdom is not a future kingdom coming a thousand years from now. In the first century, at the time of the writing of the book of Revelation, the kingdom existed. And my friend, that is exactly what our Lord taught would happen. Mark chapter 9 verse 1, Jesus said, Assuredly I say to you, talking to His immediate disciples, Assuredly I say to you, there are some standing here today who will not taste death until they see the kingdom present with power. Colossians 1 verse 13, Paul said, they were brought into, some were already translated into the kingdom of God. You see, John and Christians, listen carefully to this now, John and first century Christians were already in the kingdom. How do we know that? Look at Revelation 1, 
verse number 9, John says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. John knew Christians were in the kingdom and he was in the kingdom. The kingdom he's writing about is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to these words. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, to Peter he said, I'll give to you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will already be bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth will already be loosed in heaven. And then he said this in Matthew 16, after he said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, he then said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What is the kingdom? Kingdom's the church. God added to the kingdom in the first century. Acts chapter 2, verse number 47. And friend, this is such an important message to understanding Revelation. The book of Revelation is all about Christ's kingdom being victorious over all other kingdoms especially the Roman kingdom. Listen to Revelation chapter 11. This is one of, if not the key verse in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 11, I want you to hear verse number 15. Then the seventh angel sounded. There were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Don't you know that encouraged Christians to hear that this worldly kingdom, God's kingdom is going to overcome and His kingdom, the church, is going to outlast all others. That powerful beast in the first century, what happened to it? Went by the wayside, defeated, no longer a world power. What about the church? We're in the church of Lord Jesus Christ is still the kingdom God is concerned about today. And so we hope these seven keys to understanding and unlocking the book of Revelation will be a great help to us. And friend, we hope as we study it that we'll have the mindset as first century Christians did to read it with an eye as to what they were facing then and then by application to us today. We hope you'll join us next time for our study of the book of Revelation as we're going to continue to learn more about this great book. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.